Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back! My name is Guy Hasson and you are listening to the Squash Buckley Diaries podcast. The podcast about Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. And today we do something we usually don't do. Uh, usually it's a slice of life. We learn something about Joy and who she is in the dream and what it is like to grow up in a dream. Uh, and that's also what we do today. But we are starting a pretty big arc, a pretty long arc about some big stuff. Sometimes Joy goes through big stuff. Sometimes being in the dream is not all fun and squashbuckling adventure. Squashbuckling. It's swashbuckling adventure. Sometimes it is hard and life-threatening. And that's what we do today. Joy, the future heroine, lives in a dream in which almost anything can happen. And when her father leaves, meaning he wakes up, she's unprotected. So this is what we're going to start covering today. My voice is still slightly hoarse, as you can hear. Listening back to the last two episodes, it wasn't as hoarse as I, uh, as I imagined it is, but it sounds hoarse to me. <clears throat> and that sounded hoarse to me too, so... Uh, I won't speak a lot. I will read you the story. I think it's, uh, it's, this will reveal a lot about who Joy is and what the dream is and how hard it is to live in the dream. So let's begin. Episode 184 in the Land of the Giants, part one. Joy's age four and a half told by the Red Dragon. Dragon Lil was only four and a half years old when she and her father flew into the Land of the Giants. Dragonfather had never dreamed of something so different. The villains had always been more or less his size or smaller. But in this land, each giant was bigger than me. Ten stories high, at least. Dragonfather and Dragonlil had the task of stealing back the giant king's gold from Emir, the angry giant. They snuck into his massive home by parking Bunny's revenge outside his open window and leaping from the plank to the window sill. From there, hand in hand, they jumped down to his walk desk and tied a rope to the top of the boat-sized basket. The other end of the rope was tied to Bunny's Revenger's mast. Dragon Lily smiled in excitement. Dragonfather put a finger to his mouth to indicate silence. She nodded and did the same. Slowly, silently, they climbed back up. But just as they were in the windowsill near the plank, Dragon Lil fell and shouted, Oh! Ymir stared in his bed and woke up. Come on, come on, Dragonfather urged her on, offering her a hand. She took it and rose. Hey, Ymir bellowed, seeing them in the window. They ran across the plank, Dragonfather first, then Dragon Lil. Dragonfather kept running towards the helm. What are you doing? The giant shouted in a voice that hurt my ears, kilometers above the fray, in my hiding place. Bunny's revenge moved, rising higher. The basket of gold began to move. Now Ymir understood what was happening. He ran at the basket, but missed it as it flew through the window. He immediately ran out the door and after the ship. Higher, Dad, higher! They were flying at the height of Ymir's eyes. I can't, I'm pushing up with all the ship's gut, but the gold's weighing us down. Ymir was running on the giant grass near the giant forest. He was catching up with them. Faster, Dad, faster! Ymir raised a hand as he was running. Dragonfather tried to turn, but it was too late. Ymir swatted the pirate ship as he was running. Dragonfather was slammed against the mast, screamed in fear and pain, and vanished. That is the way of the dreamers when something too dangerous happens to them. They wake up and vanish. Bunny's revenge was hurtling through the air, spinning around itself, the basket of giant gold weighing it down. Dragon Lil was thrown off the ship too fast for me to react, swoop down and catch her. Within a split second, she was falling into the forest. 
She bumped against a giant leaf, then against a giant stem, then another, then another, and in less than five seconds she was on the ground. I did not know how hurt she had been just then. I heard her breathing. I knew she was alive, but she did not get up. Bunny's revenge landed kilometers away in the midst of the forest. Dragon Lil did not move. Dragon Father did not return. I will tell you more of what happened tomorrow. Told by the Red Dragon. Hashtags Joy, Justin, The Land of the Giants, Emir the Angry Giant, Dreamer. And so it is. And so the adventure begins. In which Justin is gone. Joy is possibly badly hurt. She could have died. She literally could have died. She is now alone. And she's badly hurt. And this is just the beginning. And these are the dangers that Justin's subconscious can't protect her from. He usually, as we've seen, he usually protects her, even if she's left alone with the villain. But this time, this time she wasn't protected. And she is still not protected. And she's four and a half years old. So, let's see what happens tomorrow. And now. The credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. All the tags mentioned in this story are searchable at the website. You can find all the stories there in written form and in fact 150 Squash Buckler Diaries more. The Squash Buckler Diaries is the diary of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. She'll be called the Forgotten Girl by her father. She'll be a true heroine. She'll change the world. This project shows her entire life from birth to death. Check out the website at guyhasson.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. I've been an author and playwright for more than 30 years, and this is the first time I've used the guyhasson.com website because The Girl in the Dream is my life project. If you have questions, if you want to comment, please do. You can comment at the website or email me at guyhasson at gmail.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, at gmail.com. The theme music is called Brass Gentleman and is created by Thomas Harudek. My name is Guy Hasson, and this is my life project. Come back tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow for more. Thank you.